Hey guys, welcome to episode 18 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. Welcome back to the podcast this week. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. This is always my favorite time of week to chat about knitting and yarn and spinning. So I really appreciate you joining me this week. Um, it's been really busy here as usual. I think I say that every single week, <laughs> but we have school and activities. So it's always nice to just take a little break and talk about something that I really, really love like knitting and yarn. So I hope you guys are doing great this week. Um, it's definitely starting to be fall here in central Indiana. It's super hot. Um, not complaining, <laughs> definitely not complaining, but um, the trees are starting to change. Uh, we have maples around our area and they're all starting to turn red, but it's still 90 degrees. <laughs> so that's a little crazy, but um, I am not complaining by any means. You know, I love the hot weather. So I'm just soaking it all up. I really hope by the time the hot weather goes away, I will be completely sick of hot weather. So it kind of tides me over through the cold months, <laughs> the long cold months that are to follow. But enough about the weather. I wanna talk about what I'm wearing and what I have on my dress form this week. So this is a, um, shawl I made, I think it was back in 2015, and it was a mystery knit along, I believe called Tales from the Isle of Purbeck. I will put all the details down below in my show notes, but this was the first mystery knit along I ever did, and it was so much fun. I This is where my love for mystery knit alongs first started. Um, it the pattern encouraged you to use, I guess, more of like a natural yarn, maybe like a, a single source, um, more of like a rustic uh, yarn, I guess, for as a matter of speaking. Um, and so I used this yarn, which I love, love so much. Um, I'm actually gonna show you the uh, ball band or the label from the skein. This is from Local Color Fiber Studio. And it is a DK weight yarn. It is 100%, um, let's see if I have the whole thing. US grown, 100% US grown and milled Rambouillet. And it is dyed with matter roots. So I still have a ball of it right here. It's just such a beautiful yarn. It called for three skeins and yeah the lace pattern on it is so beautiful. It's a triangular shaped shawl. It is not, um, I think some of you who have worked with more natural type yarns, I guess, or rustic yarns, will know what I mean when I say that this is it's wooly, but it's not scratchy at all. This is not scratchy. It is just a really, really beautiful texture. And um, you know, the, the sad thing is, is that I've never worn this. <laughs> um, it's really quite thick, it's a DK weight. And um, when I knit this, we were living in Hawaii. And so I, I definitely, I had no use it to wear this. Um, so it's just kind of been stashed away and I've been thinking of it. Um, you know, we lived here in Indiana last fall, but I was pregnant and I was extremely knits and yarn averse. And that's why I wasn't dyeing yarn. Um, I had my shop closed. I couldn't even stand the sight of yarn, sadly enough. Um, I definitely was not knitting either. So I didn't wear this last fall. So I'm actually really, really looking forward to wearing it this year because I think it's going to be super warm and I think it's really cute too. I love the color. I love that it was naturally dyed. It's just a really 
neat uh, a neat piece so um, yeah I wanted to show you that this week now that we're moving into fall but um, the other thing I want to show you is what I'm wearing today this is um, the hitchhiker shawl the ever popular hitchhiker shawl I'm sure you guys have heard of it um, and it is knit from my uh, my yarn, pineapple yarn, in the Graffiti's Art colorway. And I just think it's a really, really pretty colorway. I'll kind of show you up close. It's knit with a, um, a single ply yarn, which I like, and it worked awesome in this shawl. It's super soft and drapey. Um, I used about an entire skein. I just I kept going and going. I wanted to see how big this shawl could get and it's um it's still i don't know if you've knit the hitchhiker shawl it's um it's not a very deep shawl so the deepest part might be this this wide it's long it can be long but it's never going to be terribly deep so it's um not a huge shawl but i like it it's uh kind of a pretty accent piece i guess and um you know i thought when i put this on I don't wear it that often and I was thinking I should knit other things with these colors because I just I just think they're so bright and uh, I really like them so that is that and I should tell you I think it was two podcasts ago I was also wearing a hitchhiker shawl but it was more in like a reds and pinks and um, I guess I never put details about it because several of you messaged me and asked me if it was. It was the Hitchhiker Shawl. I knit it in Madeline Tosh, I think three unicorn tails. And the colors were, um, I believe they were Pop Rocks, Torchair, and Tarte maybe. I might have to put that down below too. <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head. It was several years ago. But um yeah, so that's what I'm wearing, what my dress form's wearing, and so let's get started what I have been knitting. I actually have a finished object to share with you guys this week. I'm so excited. It Last week was so crazy with, um, you know, just activities in school and whatnot. The past two weeks, actually, I hadn't had a lot of knitting time, and this week it was like the clouds parted. I had like two really great knitting sessions. When I say knit great knitting sessions, I mean like an hour at night. That's a great knitting session. <laughs> so I was able to finish my zippity raglan sweater for my little girl. It is, um, I've been calling it my marled zippity raglan because it is knit with two strands of yarn held together in Saturn and leaving the city. And then I know the last time I showed you guys this, I wasn't sure what color I was going to put for the hem and the cuffs. And so this is what I ended up using. This is, um, again, my yarn, pineapple yarns in the Granny Smith colorway. So I was gonna go with a bright mint, but I had this in my stash from one of the three test knits that I did this summer that I still haven't shown you guys. Hopefully soon, soon, hopefully. But it is in a DK weight, and so it's only one strand. And I thought it worked out really great. I love this. Um, you can see a little bit of pooling at the bottom, um, just the pattern it's making. It doesn't bother me. I think it's really cute. This was never intended to be, uh, you know, kind of a masterpiece of a project or anything. This was supposed to be keep my kiddo warm and make her happy with the color. <laughs> so um, I wanted to show you to the detail on the sleeve. This is what makes this pattern, I think, just uh, really great. It is a very simple pattern, but the increases on the raglan um, portion. So right here, it's a top-down sweater. And those increases are so pretty, I think. Just a very interesting detail. They were very simple, not complicated. Um, yeah, so I was super, I'm just really happy with how this pattern came out. And I know I had discussed, I wasn't sure how much yarn I would have um, with this. If I was going, I was thinking actually that I'd have to 
use another skein, um, maybe for half the sleeves or something. But I am so excited because I actually used one skein. Actually, I should say one skein of each. One skein of Saturn, one skein of Leaving the City. When I got done with the body, I weighed the skeins that I had. And I had about 40 grams left. And so I, I just think that that's the greatest thing. This is an aside. I think the greatest thing that someone ever thought of was weighing yarn while knitting because it's great if you're trying to use an entire skein. It's great if you, you know, you don't want to crack into a second skein or whatnot. Weighing your yarn is the best trick and tip I have ever, I have ever found. It is awesome. So if you don't, go get a cheap kitchen scale. They're super inexpensive. You can get them anywhere or eBay or Amazon. They don't cost a lot, but they have been invaluable in my knitting. So that's my that's my tip for the day. But um, this is how much I have left, just, just a little bit. I had, um, so I had uh, quite a bit to knit. I had 40 grams to use on the arms and I think each arm took about 15 grams. So I think this is about 10 grams. I want to say it might be a little more than that. So I have just enough to um, put as an accent on some socks or something. So I was really very pleased with that, that I didn't have to modify the sweater or whatnot. Um, yeah, so it ended up just being a beautiful project and uh, my daughter is over the moon about it. She has been patiently waiting until I could show it on the podcast. <laughs> I told her she couldn't wear it. You know, not to mention that it's 90 degrees out because, you know, we all want to wear sweaters when it's 90 degrees. She does because she's got a new sweater. So that's how my kids are. They always want to wear the knits, even in the middle of summer, if it's hot, they want to wear the knits. So I just have to embrace that while they love what I knit them because I'm sure someday, yeah, maybe someday they won't be so excited about what I knit them. So, yep, the Zippity Raglan is off my needles, another project gone. I was, I kind of felt the pressure this week. Um, I always say I'm a monogamous knitter. Maybe I kind of go wayward from that sometimes, um, but I felt the pressure of like so many projects because I cast on another project this week. So let me show you that. So after I cast, or after I cast this on, I said, I have to finish the Zippity Raglan, that's it. So that was kind of my uh, momentum for doing that. So this is actually in my little sheepy bag, one of my project bags. I currently have some of these in the shop. These are sweater size bags. And I love them because they are a really great size for multiple skeins and large projects. But this, you guys, is what I cast on this week. <laughs> this is the uh, throwback sweater by Andrew Mowry. And there's the back of it. Here's all my, my ends. I'll tuck those in. You guys, I'm kind of just obsessed with this. I hurried, hurried, hurried. I wasn't hurrying, but I definitely was just this is what I wanted to knit this week. I love this so much. Um, you might be wondering, you know, I've seen this, um, and it's supposed to be a cardigan. Yes, it will be a cardigan right here after I steak it because there it there's just no way I'm in a pearl color work right now. I'm being completely honest. I don't think there's anything wrong with pearling color work, but I, yeah, that's just not in my life right now. I don't need that. Um, so I guess as long as we're talking about modifications, yes, I'm going to steek down the middle. So I added uh, several stitches for the steek. And then also um, I modified the color work right here. I actually put two stitches of the main color in between each little color work 
section here instead of one. So these should be closer together. That's what the pattern calls for. I wanted them further apart. Um, I don't know why, I just did. So that's what I did. And I'm gonna tell you about the yarn I'm using. First of all, this main color, I'm sure you recognize it. This is what I'm using in my hipster shawl. It's the same color. I am so obsessed with this color of blue right now. I've been thinking about it for quite a while. Um, and now I just wanna make everything out of it. So I've decided I will make everything out of it. <laughs> and um, yeah, I love it. This is um, this kind of like a light gray color, I guess, is a custom color I made for another test knit. I just start going stash diving with all these projects. I really, I have so many like nearly full skeins caked up and it's just such a shame to let them sit. So um, yeah, so that light gray color, it actually has a bit of pink undertones, which is very unusual. It's a neat, neat color. So I knew it would work in this. Um, and I knew I definitely wanted this bottom color. This is Heliotrope, which I do currently have in the shop, I believe. Um, it's a color that I have done for a while. Now, the unusual thing is, is that that also was used in a test knit, but it is a sport weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hold this up. I doubled, or I held the strand uh, double for this portion of the color work. And then the orange in between the two is actually by Malabrigo. I believe it's their, is it Malabrigo? Yes, it's Malabrigo. I believe the colorway is carrot and I had this in my stash. Um, I wasn't gonna use an orange. I don't know why. Um, it just wasn't what I was gonna use, going to use. And then I saw this in my stash. It is a single ply and I just decided to go for it. So I have some interesting textures going along but I don't think it looks bad at all. As a matter of fact, I love texture so much. So for something to be a little bit different, I'm all about that. I think that that's great. So I am done with the color work portion on this, which is crazy. This is knitting up so quickly. And um, especially considering I cast this on maybe three or four days ago, and I've not been working on it every day. So that really shows you this is a fast, fast, uh, a quick knit. And it is a, I'm trying to think what else to tell you about this. It's a worsted weight. So that's another reason why it's knitting up so quickly. But I love it. I'm very excited to wear it. And I think the orange is nice because we are heading into fall and it just, um, this is going to be a thick, eh, if it's a thick sweater, it's definitely not a lightweight sweater, but it'll be nice for fall. It's just some really, um, I kind of, it, the warm color of the orange kind of offsets all of the cool tones. So like the blue, um, you know, the purple, they're all like really kind of some cool tones and to have that orange is just a nice contrast. So I really, really, really love this. And it will ease the pain of having snow on the ground for so long because I can wear the sweater and keep warm. I'm being dramatic, but um, yeah, I've really enjoyed this so far. And so now I, I believe I haven't read all the way through the pattern because I kind of just jump into these things. Um, I think right now it's just, stockinette for miles and sleeves for miles and I think from here on out it's pretty simple so except for the sticking part which I don't think will be that hard I think it'll be really fun actually yeah yeah it'll be fun right it won't be hard <laughs> so the last uh, knit I guess that I want to show you or give you an update on is my hipster shawl and I have been working on this and I think I actually stopped in the middle of a row. Not supposed to do that. Surprised it hasn't fallen off my needles yet. But I have made some progress on this. And I've actually, um, well, let me tell you about the pattern. This is the Hipster Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. It is uh, pineapple yarn in 
still unnamed colorway. Y'all had some great, um, really great suggestions as to colorways. And um, I'm, I'm sure once I put this in the shop, I will have to decide on one. But I actually started this next row of X's. I still don't know what these are called. I'm sure there's a name, I just haven't looked at it. <laughs> But um, I'm getting there. It is actually getting pretty big. It doesn't look like it because I stopped in the middle of the row and I can't show you uh, how wide it is, but it is getting pretty wide. I, um, I'm on my second skein of yarn here. It calls for three. So um, this will be, I'm sure, used up soon. I'm loving this shawl though. I think it is so pretty. I can't wait to wear it. Again, this is another worsted weight project, which I am loving that it's worsted weight. Um, I, feel, I feel like I've kind of come into the groove with the worsted weight. I was having, um, it just wasn't flowing for me. The knitting wasn't, it still was incredibly enjoyable. Don't get me wrong. It was great, but um, it just wasn't moving as quickly as like a fingering weight project would. And now I feel like it's moving along. And I think it was just me not really knitting with worsted weight or like a thicker yarn that often. So I am loving it. I'm really, you know, all these projects that I've started, you know, I had my beekeeper cardigan, which I love. I'll have the throwback cardigan and then the hipster shawl. And of course this too. Um, I feel like I've got some warm wool garments <laughs> to keep me warm. Um, anytime the air gets like a little crisp, it was it was a little cool, I think maybe last week or the week before, I can't remember. And I honestly just don't have that many winter clothes. I know that sounds crazy, but um, you know, last year I was wearing maternity clothes and this year I, I don't, just I don't have the clothing <laughs> for this climate. It's a little crazy. So um, I'm glad that I can kind of make my wardrobe fit the climate and um, kind of building up my wardrobe. Anyway, I'm excited about all those things, but I want to show you a, um, I guess an acquisition that I received, when was it? It's been about two weeks now, but I wanted to wait in case anyone hasn't received theirs yet. So I know I mentioned um, on a podcast, several podcasts ago that I joined the Paradise Fibers Fiber of, of the Month Club and I recently received my first shipment. So um, I was so excited to receive it. And if you haven't, if you're, if you've joined and you haven't opened yours or you haven't received yours yet, um, skip ahead. You don't want to see this. I don't want to ruin the surprise for you, but I figure since it's been a couple weeks out that everyone who has ordered one has probably received it. So let me go ahead and show you. This is what it came in this month. This is a, um, a backpack, a little backpack that it came in, which is so cute. And I really love, you know how you guys, I always say that I love packaging. I love that this came in, it came in a clear mailer, and so when you received it, this is what you saw. You actually saw this through the window, which I thought was so cute. But their theme this month was back to school, which I thought was so sweet. And um, it, I just, everything about this was really, it was just so well put together and just really true to the theme. So, um, First of all, this is, this was included in it. It's just an undyed, um, it's undyed wool, it's Cheviot, I believe is how you pronounce it. And it was really sweet because it came with a card all about the sheep. And um, this is really soft, I like it. I'm sure I will love spinning it. <laughs> So that came with, uh, or that came in the package. I wanted to show you, I don't know if I have it anymore. Um, it actually came in a really sweet, um, 
like a brown lunch bag and someone had written on it a heart and then E-W-E, so it was love you, like a little note. Isn't that sweet? I just thought that was so cute. And um, so the next fiber that was in here was four different um, little bags like this. I'll just go ahead and show you. Everyone received different colors, and these are the colors that I received, and these are Sari Silk Roving. So what this is, um, these are actually, um, it's roving that is made from um, bits of Sari Silk. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. This is the white. You can just see it is so glossy obviously it's silk so it's gonna have that sheen but I love how it has just little bits of fiber in there and you know the funny thing is is that I thought this was definitely recycled garments it's not from recycled garments it's actually from um, scraps of fabric used in um, the production of garments so no recycled garments here but let me go ahead and show you all these colors they're really really pretty there's the blue, which I think is so pretty. And all of these colors have little bits of other colors in them, which I love that. It just, I don't know, I really love that. I don't know what I'm going to do with these yet. There's the pink. Guess which one's my favorite. <laughs> this is so, so beautiful. But um, I think you can spin this on its own. I think you can add this maybe in a blending board and make rollags and just have this as an accent. This is also really beautiful. And um, yeah, so I'm not really sure. You know, the nice thing is, is that I don't really feel like I need to do something with all this immediately. Um, I, f I just think that it's one of those fibers I can save and when I know more about spinning, um, I think it'll be a really great accent to projects. Um, so the neat thing is, I want to show you um, one more thing in this bag. The um, bag also included this. It's a pencil case. <laughs> And in this pencil case, of course, there's a uh, cute sheep sticker. This is their logo. It's in the shape of an apple. So cute. And a pin, which is, it looks like it's written on a chalkboard. So cute. But it also includes gloves and these highlighters, which uh, is a little strange, until you read the card and it tells you instructions or it gives you instructions how to dye the undyed cheviot wool with the highlighters and so I just think that's such a clever idea I mean I just I would have never thought of including you know obviously highlighters there's it's a school theme but um, to give instructions how to extract the dye from the highlighters and then how to dye it in, in a home setting, you know, because for me, dyeing is just, I have the equipment, I have, you know, the space to do that, but this is how you can do it at home without all the, you know, dedicated equipment and whatnot. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Um, I think it'll, I think it would be really fun to dye it. At the same time, I dye a lot and I don't, really want to do another dye project <laughs> so we'll see um you know I thought maybe I would just spin the undyed wool and then um give my kids the highlighter markers and let them draw on the skein of yarn that I had spun I think they would love doing that it would probably end up looking like this <laughs> actually um so that's one idea. I thought that would be really fun. And um, we'll just see, we'll see. I don't, I mean, it's not just with the sorry silk roving, it's not 
uh, there's no time constraint on it. I don't feel pressured into doing something this month with it. I want to take my time and do something meaningful with it instead of just feeling like it's an obligation to use. So anyway, I thought that was a really fun um, kit to start off with and I am going to do October's as well. So we'll just see what I get in October. So that is what I have for you guys this week with uh, my knitting with my and I guess acquisitions um, I have been spinning here and there for a little bit I'm still working on a braid from Jinx Yarns called um, I believe it's called Land of Glaze and that's been really fun I'm getting I've done about half of it so far so um, that's been really nice to work on um, it has some darker colors in the braid so uh, that always kind of keeps it interesting the color variations um, yeah, so in shop news this week, um, I just want to thank you guys for purchasing the Texture Time kits that I put up last week. I am so excited for that mystery knit along, and I am just so excited that I was able to give you guys some different color options, and um, I do have, I think I have about nine kits left in the shop. So. If you missed that update, uh, go take a look. And um, it's a mystery knit along by Stephen West. His pattern is available on Ravelry now, and the knit along will start the beginning of October. So you have time to choose your yarn. And I haven't decided what yarn I'm going to use yet. Um, I'm really drawn to bright colors, obviously. <laughs> um, so that's always my go to. I have a couple kits though that in the shop now that are really, really pretty darker colors, um, even more moodier colors. I'm really drawn to them. They're very pretty. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm, I'll probably decide last minute, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> But um, I wanted to let you know those kits will be up through September, and I'll probably take them down the beginning of October as soon as the knit along begins. So go check those out, they're really cute. Um, so I've been doing that. I've actually closed the advent calendar listing for this year. So thanks to all of you for purchasing those. I am so excited to start working on them. I've started dyeing the mini skeins. I've received all the packaging and little goodies that will be in the, in the um, I guess, the calendars. And I've started making the project bags as well. So they are well underway and I believe those will ship out around the first week of November, I think. Um, so those have been really fun to work on. And yeah, other than that, knitting, um, or sorry, dyeing some yarn, and I will have a shop update next Friday. Probably some single skeins. I hope to pop in some project bags. Maybe, <laughs> we'll see how much time I have. Um, I would also like to put in some more sock sets. I think you guys really enjoyed those. I think those are a really great option. I love the idea of having a 50 gram skein plus a mini skein for accents so i will let you know next week and um if there are any specific colorways that i've dyed before that you'd like to see um just leave me a comment below or um contact me via my website or instagram whatever's easiest for you guys so that that's all that's been going on here I am so glad you joined me this week. Thank you so much for sharing a bit of your time with me. And if you like this podcast, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, the more likes that this podcast receives and subscriptions, that actually pushes it out to other fellow fiber fanatics like we are. And so more people can watch. So until next time, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye, guys.